Well, let me add my welcome to those you've already had. My name's Rich. I'm the pastor here at Lions Down. And uh, we're going to be looking at those just two verses um, for uh, a few minutes this morning. There we go. But let's pray um, just before we start and ask for God's help. Gracious God, we thank you so much for uh, the privilege of prayer that we can speak to you as we do. We thank you that we um, can call you Father. And as we think about prayer this morning, please speak to us and help us understand prayer better that we would enjoy that privilege even more. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, prayer, uh, one writer says, is the chief blessing of being a Christian. We can kind of see why they say that, can't you? That you, me, ordinary created people can talk to the creator of the universe, the almighty, all-powerful God, the holy God, and yet we can relate to him in prayer. We can call him Father. We saw a few weeks back that when the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, takes up home, takes up residence within a Christian, he enables, he, they are adopted into God's family and he enables them to call God Abba, Father, that intimate, close word. Prayer is a wonderful blessing. Prayer is a wonderful privilege. And yet, if you've been a Christian for more than about three days, you know that prayer is sometimes a problem. Prayer is sometimes difficult. But when I say prayer is a problem, what I really mean is we have a problem praying. There are all kinds of reasons why we, we sometimes struggle in our prayer lives, and this will change in different seasons of them. Sometimes, there are, sometimes it's distractions. You, know, you wake up, you shut your eyes, and all that comes to mind is all the million things that you've got to do that day. Sometimes it's tiredness. It just simply stops you from getting to it. Sometimes it's disappointment. Maybe the fact that you haven't seen God answer some, your, your prayers in the past and you think, well, is it even worth it? Well, will anything happen or change because of it? You know, there are those times, aren't there, that when whatever time of day, whether it's morning or evening before bed or whenever, when you sit down, you shut your eyes and nothing comes. In a chapter in Romans 8, which speaks so much of the Spirit's work in the lives of Christians, it, we've seen so much of what he does to Christians, setting free, adopting, bringing us into adoption, all those kind of things. This morning, we're going to see what the Spirit does for us, does for us, or with us. But just a reminder where we have got to. We are working through Romans chapter 8. Uh, one of, if not the greatest chapters of the Bible. This great chapter, all about assurance. The beginning of the chapter starts by saying that for Christians, there is no condemnation. There is no guilty verdict and therefore no punishment that they need fear. No condemnation. And the chapter finishes with no separation. There is no separation between the Christian and the love of God, no matter what goes on. And in between all kinds of assurances and reminders of the blessings of being God's children. Well, assurance is so necessary, and we particularly picked this up in the last two times we're in Romans. The reason why it's so necessary to have this assurance, these reminders, is because although the Christian's future is glorious, the path to it, the path there, is going to be full of suffering. Life for Christians is going to be difficult and painful. And so we saw Christians on that path of suffering, we are to wait to look forward to this glorious future eagerly and patiently. But this morning we get this reminder that it isn't that God says, okay, here's your wonderful future, good luck, see you there. No, no, he, the Spirit who is living in us dwells in us, helps us as we wait, as we long, as we wait with patience. And we're going to see that particularly in the area of prayer. So from the handout there, you, you see we, we see three points from these 
these two verses. The first one, the starting point, is our weakness. Our weakness. You'll see that verse 26 begins with the word likewise. So Paul is drawing some kind of comparison. And I think he's probably referring back to verse 15 to 17, where he last spoke of explicitly of the Spirit's work. Back there, I've already referred to it really, but in verses 15 to 17, the, the Holy Spirit comes into God's people and enables them to cry, Abba, Father, enables them to call God Father. And as we call God Father, that is testimony to verse 16 and 17 that we really are his children. And now Paul says the Spirit not only enables us to pray, but he also helps us in our weakness as we pray. Have a look, that's what he says. Here's the help, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. In our weakness. That word weakness is, is often used in the Bible for illness of many kinds, but it's a varied word. It's used in, in a number of ways. Uh, it, it can be physical frailty. Our bodies that are just are wasting away, uh, struggling, frailty. It can be um, our, our sinful inability. So not just an, a natural thing, but actually our, our wills that are actually um, uh, failing to love God as they should. It can be just general neediness. The, the only other time it's meant used in Romans is, is chapter 6, verse 19, where it's translated natural limitations. So this weakness is this idea of Frailty, difficulty, neediness, being limited. And there are lots of times when we are, again, even as Christians, weak and in need of help. Sometimes we're uh, weak physically. Maybe illness or tiredness, exhaustion. There are times when we're weak emotionally. We can find ourselves overwhelmed by all manner of things. There are times when we're weakened, well, all the time, really, but we're weakened by the the remnants of sin that's still in our life. And the Spirit helps us in those times. But the the particular help, sorry, the particular weakness that Paul points to is the weakness in our prayer lives. And it's particularly a weakness when we don't know how we should be praying. Let me read a bit, a bit more of verse 26 there. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray as we ought. Again, I'm sure that reading that, if you've been a Christian for any time at all, that resonates. There can be times when we, we simply don't know what to pray for and how to pray it. The Apostle Paul in Philippians, a book that we looked at as a church a while back, he he was wrestling between those two things. He wanted to depart and be with the Lord. He wanted uh, to ultimately to die in order that he may go to be with Jesus forever. But equally, he longed to stay and to help and serve the church. He was wrestling between these two things. He didn't know what was best. He didn't know how to pray in that situation. I found this very early on in praying for our building project. When we first found a building, I, I didn't know what to pray. Because I, we wanted the building, but if it wasn't the right building, then I didn't want the building because I didn't want to go down the long line. And, and I, I found myself not knowing what to pray. Uh, Lord, do something. Sort it. Maybe there's an event in your life, a circumstance in your life, something in church life, something going on in the world, and you just don't know what to pray. An elderly relative gets, gets ill. Did you pray? Did you pray they would get better? Did you pray that God would ease their passing and that he'd be preparing you and the family for that time? I don't know. You face, may face an opportunity and you don't know whether to pray for God for boldness and faith to, to go and take that opportunity or patience to, to wait but for something else. You've got a grown-up child, maybe, who's, who's walked away from the Lord, and they've got themselves in trouble. 
Do you, what do you pray? Do you pray that the trouble be taken away? Yet we know that God often uses hardships to call people to himself and bring them back to himself. What do you pray? Whatever your politics, but when you read of the, the migrant disaster this week in the boats, what do you pray? There are also times when it's not simply an intellectual thing. You know, it's not, do I pray for this or that? I'm not sure what is the best thing. But actually, there can be times in the depths of despair when all you can do is groan. When you're in so much pain, you don't get beyond Lord. When the confusion can be so great that you're on your knees, but the words just won't come out. We are weak. We are weak in our prayer lives. There are times when we we simply don't know what to pray. We don't know how to pray it. We're tired. We're distracted. We're weary. Words won't come out. We are weak. But, wonderfully, our next point, we have help. We have help. We've already seen it. Verse 26, likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. It's the idea of, um, you know, uh, it, again, it's a rich idea used, used in the Bible, it, it, the idea of, of somebody coming alongside somebody else to help them carry something, to bear something. So you can imagine you're, you're moving something really heavy um, from the garden, so across the garden, or moving a sofa across the living room or whatever, and you're picking it up, and you, you're struggling to get it there. And then someone comes along and adds that, oh, they, they, they come alongside you, help, help you bear it, help you lift it. So that's what that, that word means. The Spirit helps us, comes alongside us, helps to bear the load. That's what the Spirit does. But we've, we've already seen the, the particular weakness that Paul has in mind. Yes, yes, it's a general thing, but particularly it's the weakness in prayer. And so verse 26, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray as we ought. Well, what kind of help then does, this, does Paul have in mind? He goes on, But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Someone who intercedes is someone who, who speaks on your behalf. And that's what the Spirit does. He, he intercedes for us. He speaks on our behalf. If you, if you get yourself in trouble, it's a good thing to have a good lawyer. Because you, when you have a lawyer, you have someone who is, who's on your side, who then is able to put the case better than you are able to. Who, who can plead for you, who can argue for you, who speaks for you. And Paul says, look, we haven't just got a lawyer, we've got the Spirit, the third person of the Holy Trinity, Holy Trinity living in you, and he intercedes for you. When you don't know how to pray as you ought, what to pray as you ought, you have the Spirit who intercedes for you. That is truly astonishingly good news. You see, see Christians have, have two intercessors. Christians have two intercessors. As we're going to see in a couple of weeks, Jesus intercedes. So just cast your eyes down to verse 34. Who is to condemn? Jesus Christ is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who can condemn? No one can. Why? Because Jesus the one who died and was raised is now at the right hand of God and is interceding for us. You see, in Jesus' death, he, he reconciled all of God's children to the Father. He paid for their sins perfectly and completely. He dealt with all that punishment, all that condemnation that we would deserve. He dealt for it as he died on the cross. And all that barrier, everything in between us and the Father was done and dealt with. 
And then Jesus rose and ascended back to his Father, and he is now at the Father's side, interceding for us. His presence and his words interceding for us, saying, look, yes, Father, ritual, yes, he's sinned again, yes, he's messed up again, but I died for that sin. I paid for that one. He's your dear son. Jesus is in heaven interceding for, uh, for Christians. So we have an intercede, uh, intercessor in heaven. We also have a second intercessor in our hearts, the Holy Spirit. How, how does this work? How, how does he intercede for us? What, what does that mean? Well, we'll have a look at, um, again at the, the, the last bit of verse 26. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Uh, lots of argument over what, what exactly is meant by these things. It, it's literally wordless groaning. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us with wordless groaning. We'll see in a moment, he doesn't need to speak. He's interceding. He doesn't need to speak in order to do that work. But that isn't to say that we don't pray. It isn't to say that we are simply there and the Spirit does all the praying for us, interceding for us. We're not involved. Now, we've already seen that the word helper is, is somebody who comes alongside and helps carry the load. And then we've already, um, again, seen that um, the, when the Spirit intercedes for us when we don't know how to pray as we ought. So as we are there struggling, not knowing what to pray, that's when the Holy Spirit, as it were, takes over. We saw back in verse 22 that, um, that we are groaning. So what I think that the picture we get here is that as, as we are groaning, it is the Holy Spirit who is prompting those groanings. And he's shaping those groanings. And ultimately, he's giving meaning to those groanings to his Father. And again, quite how that works we don't know. This is the deep inner workings of the Trinity. But let me give, give me two, two. Let me give you two illustrations of the kind of thing. There's no perfect illustration, but the kind of thing that's going on there. Our, our, our two boys, and um, we've got a two-year-old and a, a four-year-old, and the two-year-old is in that full, um, not blabber. That's the wrong word. But chatter, chatter, chatter stage. Chat, 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 chat. But what do you mean? What do you mean? And then his big brother pipes up. He means he wants an ice cream. Uh. It's usually some kind of food. But you get these kind of... Sometimes we get, but you wouldn't understand. But he's chat, 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 chat. And his brother, he intercedes for him. What he means is this. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe slightly more helpfully. Think what an editor does for a writer. Okay, the writer, they put, they put their words down on a page. They, they write what they want to communicate. They, 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 they put it in there, trying to get this message across. And then the editor comes in and corrects the, the typos, and corrects the grammar. But, but more, that they make the, the revisions. They, they cut things out. They say, well, you might want to add this bit in or emphasize that. I think that's the kind of thing we're meant to see of what the Spirit does, interceding for us. Adding words, adding meaning, sharpening, correcting. One commentator writes it, the Spirit fixes our prayers on the way up. A wonderful, beautiful description. Prayers that are badly expressed. Prayers that aren't actually expressed at all. Prayers that are just the, the longings, the desires, the groans. Well, the Spirit fixes those prayers. He intercedes for us. And again, we've got to be slightly careful about um, saying exactly what this looks like. But you can kind of imagine the thing. Uh, Father, yeah, he, he's just prayed that uh, he, wants, he, he wants this to happen. But, but that's, that's not what's best for him. What he, what he really means is this. Okay. He's correcting, changing, shaping, giving meaning to our prayers. When we don't know what to pray as we ought, we have the Holy Spirit interceding for us. 
presenting those prayers, faultless, unblemished before the Father. So in our, we have our weakness, then we have the Spirit's help, and then finally we have our, our confidence. Our confidence, and it's there in verse 27. Verse 27 says, And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. How, how does this work? What's our confidence then in these prayers? Well, uh, again, here I think is an indication that we are involved in this praying because the, the, the Father searches our hearts. He sees what is there. But more than that, it isn't simply he searches our hearts. It's the Father knows the uh, knows what is the mind of the Spirit. Hence the, the wordless groanings. The Father hears these prayers. He knows these prayers. He gets them. And particularly, again, pointing back to verse 26 and our weakness of not knowing what to pray is because we don't know often, usually, what is the right thing. We're not sure. But wonderfully, did you see that at the end of verse 27? The Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The Spirit is God. He's the third person of the Trinity. And so as he intercedes and says that this is what um, is best, well, it's God praying. And so we can be sure that that is indeed the will of God. That there's perfect intimacy, perfect harmony between the Spirit and the Father. And so when the Spirit intercedes for us, he is always interceding according to God's will. In our, our weakness when we feel desperate about the things uh, that are going on in our lives, the the things that you're trying to pray for, and and when all you can get out is, Lord, help. Don't worry, that's enough. That's enough. Because there is someone praying for you. So be encouraged in these things. But, But I do again want to stress that uh, this isn't the kind of thing, well, I'm not going to bother praying then. Lord, Lord knows what I need. He's got the Spirit interceding for me. Perfect. And when we do that, we forget what is the purpose of prayer. The purpose of prayer being the relationship, enjoying the relationship that we have with our Father. We forget the purpose of it is that prayer is the ultimate expression of our trust in Him, our dependence upon Him. Now we are to be involved. The Holy Spirit doesn't eliminate the need of prayer. He helps us as we pray. So to again kind of push that illustration a bit further, the, the editor uses the words that the writer writes. The editor doesn't do the writing. So the, the, the Spirit works through our, our prayers, through the attitudes of our hearts. We are, so we are to, to wrestle, and again, this isn't an excuse for laziness, we are to, to wrestle in, in situations where we don't know what to do, we don't know what to pray, we are to wrestle with those things. To think about these things, to search the scriptures to these things, to, to ask wise Christians about these things. We are to engage our brains, but as we do that, rest assured that we have the Spirit interceding for us in those prayers. He is at work. So, brothers and sisters, in weakness, in those times of trouble, be it from your circumstance, be it from not knowing what to do, pray. Get out what you can and have confidence that as you do that, you have the Spirit interceding for you. When you feel weak, when you're suffering, sickness, futility, persecution, trouble, confusion, when all of those things come on, uh, don't, don't take those things as a sign that God is displeased with you or God is angry with you. I think that's how we, we naturally think. But actually, no, this is a time when, when God is going to be helping you. And the Spirit comes alongside and intercedes. We are weak. We are weak. And particularly in our prayer lives, 
There are times when we, we don't know what to pray, we don't know how to pray to get it out. We have help. We have help. And what great help it is that God's Spirit dwelling in us, interceding for us. Let's pray with his help. Father God, we thank you so much for the Spirit's work in every single one of your people. Thank you for all that he does. Thank you for all that he still does for us and with us. We thank you so much that we have that great privilege and blessing of prayer. That we can call you Father. Please help us in our prayers. Help us to enjoy this, that, that, that daily delight. And in those struggles, please would you give us confidence to keep crying out, knowing that you are helping in those prayers as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Our uh, final song.